I'm particularly interested in innovation, in pushing out the boundaries of possibilities and, what we, and potentially what we are going to be seeing in the future. I certainly want to see a lot more when it comes to women being involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm really interested in what are the projects that you've seen where the use of cryptocurrency or blockchain has really pushed out the boundaries and inspired you. What, what has been the most inspiring project that you've actually seen yourself that you think that could actually help inspire people to think beyond what we're actually witnessing now? <sighs> That's a, that's a tough question. I think you know, a lot of the things I see are boring and quite disappointing. Um, yet another ICO, yet another person trying to reinvent the existing system only now, plus blockchain. It's like, let's build a, a bank with blockchain. Let's do an investment fund with blockchain. Let's build a transportation company with blockchain, a gaming company with blockchain. It's like you don't need blockchain for most of those things. Why? That's boring. One of the most inspiring stories I had is from a woman called uh, and I'm gonna probably mispronounce her name, Foreste Farouk. Um hmm? Forestra. Um, and she is uh, a woman from Afghanistan who is running a uh, program called Code to Inspire. And it is a program that teaches uh, teenage girls in Afghanistan how to write software. Uh, which is something that they can do in the privacy of their own home with a cheap laptop without anybody knowing what they're actually doing. And then how to sell software programming services and earn cryptocurrency that they control in a country where it is illegal for women to own property. That is inspirational. Um, yeah, there is um, there's a couple of charities that are doing interesting work in Bitcoin um, and other cryptocurrencies. One of them is called BitGive Foundation. Um, it's a woman-owned organization, which is a, a non-profit uh, registered charity, and they've got a program called GiveTrack. What they're doing is they're using the radical transparency of the blockchain in order to give donors the opportunity to watch their donation on the blockchain all the way down to purchasing the bricks that go into the well for the water well project in Kenya. So they are basically taking a problem that is fairly big in the charitable world, which is accountability for donors' money. You know, in many charities, less than 50% of the money donated actually goes to the charitable causes. A lot of it goes up in administrative costs, etc. Here, you can watch your donation and see which part of it ends up and track it all the way down to the charitable project. So give track. I think that's a really interesting um, project. Um, th there's a number of others like that. There are few and, and far between at the moment. Uh, most people are trying to make money as fast as they can and get rich. <laughs> but every now and then I, read, I meet some really inspiring, uh, humble individuals who are doing some really fascinating work. Thank you for asking that question. Do you have a follow-up? Can I just add another question then? Yes. What would you like to see? Hmm. Um, I think the most important project that people could be working on right now, and there's a couple of companies working on it, is to address the issue of international remittances. Remittances is when um, Immigrants, migrant, itinerant workers send money to their home countries while working abroad, often working as illegal or undocumented uh, laborers, farm workers in other countries, including, of course, the United States, the United Kingdom, Northern Europe, um, but but also in Southeast Asia. Um, there's a lot of migrant workers in the United Arab Emirates, in Kuwait, in, in Saudi, for example. Um, Sending money home is a $550 billion business a year. Of that, $175 billion goes to fees and profits for two or three companies, Western Union, MoneyGram, Wells Fargo, and a few others. Um, this is basically taking uh, a significant chunk of money from the world's poorest people. And 
Ironically enough, $175 billion happens to be the total sum of foreign financial aid by all governments in the world um, donated each year. So, the same amount that governments are spending to support poor people around the world by giving it at the top, and none of it gets to the bottom, the money transfer companies are taking from the bottom. So instead of trying to fix foreign aid, how about letting those people keep their own money? If we can do remittances with cryptocurrencies, which will involve breaking a lot of laws, because you know, no licenses. You have someone here who takes ringgit, buys a cryptocurrency, and then the cryptocurrency gets um, transmitted to another country. And then that in that other country gets converted to cash and given to the recipient, and you've basically got a system of remittances that is informal and in some cases illegal. But what it does is it injects 175 billion dollars directly into the pockets of the poorest people on earth. Not only that, the recipients of remittances are 85 percent women. Uh, the World Bank has estimated that for every one dollar that they get it generates two and a half dollars of economic activity, primarily in education, health care, sanitation, and security, food security, most importantly. So this is an area where these cryptocurrencies could actually deliver enormous benefits to some of the poorest people in the world. They don't even need to know that they're using cryptocurrencies. In fact, some of the best applications out there just hide that. The cryptocurrency is just a pipe that is being used to convert the money and send it across the borders, which is the hardest part. The fees can be uh, less than 1%, significantly on the cut of Western Union. And there is one small downside. Um, if this plan is successful, um, Western Union, uh, who invented wire transfers in 96, did you know that? They invented wire transfers in 96. 1896. <laughs> Not 1996. Um, unfortunately, they're going to go out of business, and at least on this side, not a single tear will be shed. <laughs> so yeah, that inspires me.